Okay, welcome back everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man and I'm casting Team Empire versus Absolute Legends. This is a best of three series. Game number two. AL are currently up 1-0 versus Empire. Empire were the community favourites for this match and they have been... Well, it's a little bit of an upset. Currently, Empire is sitting on a 22 win streak, looking to make it 23. AL looking to break that streak and upset them. Basically upset everybody, I would say, except for Samo, the manager. I've got him sitting there in the channel, probably rubbing his hands with glee as to how game number one turned out. But Empire, anyway, going back to this match, Empire, they open up with a Batrider ban as well as a Darkseid. In all honesty, Batrider has been causing mass carnage at the moment. I would not be surprised to see him banned more and more frequently. Might have been a little overbuffed, to be honest. Of all the heroes, he received the biggest list of buffs, just... A huge, like a list as long as your arm, and he was already a pretty decent hero, so may have been, may have gone a little bit over the top, but we'll see how time, time will tell. Linnea, though, being banned by absolute, uh, I'm dead. Being banned by absolute legends, making sure they get rid of her. She is quite an annoying hero and very, very powerful. If anything was going to make a comeback last match, it was definitely that. And now Empire, they open up with a Naga Siren build. Absolute legends may need to make sure they secure themselves some AOE, make sure they keep those AOE combos away from Naga Siren. Obviously, the big, uh, the big. Ones that they want to get rid of, of course, uh, Black Hole from Enigma, as well as the Ravage from Tidehunter. So those two are the usual suspects to work in Naga Siren. They have the double pick now. It's one of the dangers of first picking the Siren as your opponents will then clean up all of the mass AOE that is not picked. I honestly want to see Naga Siren as well as Jakiro work together. I think those two would be pretty damn nasty working together. It buys time for Jakiro to get his slightly delayed spells together. And there we go. Absolute Legends. They immediately go, holy crap, Naga Siren. Let's get rid of the, uh, let's make sure we get our hands on this AOE and keep it away from it, because of course you can't ban it out preemptively. Empire now, what will they pick now? They need to pick some kind of wombo combo to work with the Naga Siren, of course she's part of the two hit punch. They grab out the Windrunner, so they've got a decent suicide soul, or a decent utility hero there. She can do just about anything at the moment. She can just, she can fill out many, many roles, of course. Very powerful, the Suicide Cell, but we've seen a few teams so far actually put her into the, like, a hard support in a dual lane or a trial. She just gets slotted in there as a hard support, and it works. It definitely does work. Uh, she does, she can't play as aggressively as she'd like, of course. Winner, when you have her, when you have a four star for mech, she can play quite aggressively, use a win run to get out of trouble, four star around looking for those angles. Without them, she has to play a little bit more defensively. Now, Lashrak being picked up. Naga Siren, she's got some AoE there. It's, not, it's still not the huge, not a huge deal. It's definitely not Black Hole Ravage level, but we'll see what Absolute Legends is hard to pick up now. I think they might just secure a solo mid, or rather one of their primary farmers in a second. They might want to get their hands on that primary farm before we go into the second series of bans. And now is definitely a good time to grab it, just because they can start banning out any hard counters to that farmer. And when I say farmer, I don't mean, say, a hard carry. I mean anything from a Templar Assassin to a Lashrak to a solo mid bat rider. Anybody who's going to be given a primary amount of farm, just all the last hits they can find in their lane, rather than just some kind of hard spot. And Enigma, though, will find out whether or not he's going to be a suicide solo. Tidehunter, of course, has been seen in this tournament as a suicide solo. He does manage to fulfill the role quite easily. But they may just want him on the sidelines supporting, doing a lot of pulling, stacking, harassing in the lane, that sort of deal. Queen. And it will be Queen of Pain, so they do secure one of their primary farms. Of course, Queen of Pain does get seen as a safe lane farmer, as well as a uh, solo mid. She's quite powerful in both roles. The question is, who is she going to be mid against at the moment? Empire, they could throw any three of those here. Well, not really Naga Siren, but either the Windrunner or the Lashrag. Naga Siren could deal mid. If you throw her in there with another stun, she is very, very dangerous. Even Queen of Pain would have to watch out. It would be very, It could be very problematic for her if she gets caught out by a net as well as a follow-up stun there. And now we also have the Brewmaster being banned as well. Again, not a bad option, of course. Brewmaster can cause all sorts of carnage, and he's quite annoying. The amount of disables he can bring to the board can keep heroes like Enigma, as well as Queen of Pain, out of the fight. And the main thing is, Naga Siren goes in. This is one of the things, if you split, your enemy has time to set up their spells. Of course, there is a bit of a delay on the split, then you've got a micro, your, your elemental panners have to make sure which one you've got selected is the right one, that sort of stuff. And just generally, it takes a little bit of time to get going. Naga Siren can, of course, sleep buy time for Panda again, and then he can pick, he has, he can at leisure isolate two key heroes, he can say pick up Tidehunter, use the whirlwind on him, get him in the air, and then stun Enigma, and then they can just burst down Enigma before it can lock down, lock them down with a black hole. So it's one of those heroes, definitely a decent ban. Wisp has been banned by Empire this time around, I guess we're a little bit worried about his gank potential. Wisp though, 
I honestly don't know if Al would have run. I haven't really seen them in action with a Wisp so far, so... We'll see how it goes down. Chaos Knight also being banned by Al. Okay, then Disruptor being banned on top of that. Disruptor definitely a decent ban. In fact, this is something the Asian teams have done in the past against Naga Siren, is when they move in for the combo, Disruptor will then glimpse... She, well, after the, after the Song of the Siren wears off, Disruptor will throw a glimpse on the second... Like, say if you had Naga Siren and Enigma... Basically, Disruptor would hang back and then glimpse the Enigma as he tries to move into combo off the Song of the Siren. It is a very effective strategy, a counter strategy, so good ban there from Empire indeed. And all, all around, he's just a very strong hero. His kinetic wall is very powerful. In fact, they could have grabbed him up, they would have loved it. Nyx Assassin being picked up! Empire going for another gank heavy lineup. Nyx Assassin, of course, one of the premier gankers, did receive quite a hefty buff as well for his uh, abilities in the 6.75 patch. We'll see how he goes down with that though. Absolute Legends, fourth pick now. The final ban from them was Enchantress. Honest, that definitely could have worked out if you had Naga Siren, Enchantress, and Lashrak just sort of uh, buzzing around in the top lane. They could quite easily secure some early towers. Naga Siren, oh, rather, Naga Siren liked to take that top lane. Winner, I think, in this case, like to be Suicide Soul. Lashrak going to support. They could still pick up a Chen if they want to have that jungler. Nyx Assassin going to take that solo mid and win run a Suicide Solo. I think that could definitely work out if they wanted to go with that for their lineup. That or they might just pick up. They might even just pick up a secondary, like a secondary support. Of course, remember, of course, they the, the dire side has plenty of pulls available. They don't have to do any shenanigans with the trees, chopping down specific patches of trees. They can just pull the easy camp nice and easy, and then drag a hard camp off that easy camp. It is very easy for a for a support hero to clean up a lot of jungle creep and just basically use that as a primary source of income and basically essentially jungle, do nothing but jungle. Crystal Maiden, Crystal Maiden being picked up by Ale. They have a lot of lockdown now. They are quite vulnerable. Like, a couple of heroes are quite vulnerable to getting picked off. We've got Crystal Main, we've got Queen of Pain, and Enigma. All of them are quite vulnerable to getting burst down by the Nyx Assassin, particularly Queen of Pain. She is not like copying. She really does not like copying Matter Burns going towards the mid and late game. It, they really do start to sting. Keeper of the Light as a final pick for Empire. This is a very interesting lineup. Two heroes that we don't see all that often. Keeper of the Light did get picked up every now and then. Of course, EG. We've seen Demon Captain America play the, sol uh, the Suicide Solo Keeper of the Light a few times. But I haven't seen him all that frequently. So they're picking up a Keeper of the Light. Nyx Assassin as well. Keeper of the Light, of course, has had a slight buff in the form of Chakra. Does It's a little bit cheaper, so it's a little bit more cost-efficient for him to spam it on himself at low levels. So it does allow him just to... Basically, it allows him to spam it on himself. It just gives him more mana. It allows him to spam Illuminate more off that. And also, like, heroes like Nyx are going to appreciate, especially if they're just working together. The main thing is Nyx can, of course, set up those big, those big, big Illuminates, and at the same time, Keeper of the Light can help him deal with the serious mana issues he runs into. Nyx, very greedy. For the amount of mana he has, he's extremely greedy. It's why we see Arcane Boots rush at him almost all the time, just because his mana pool cannot handle it otherwise. And Absolute Legends pick up a Phantom Assassin. Wow. Okay, so we've seen other te we've seen teams particularly doing the TI2. They've used Phantom Assassin as sort of a substitute for Anti Mage. And when I say that, I mean a substitute in the terms of the fact that Anti Mage can be played quite aggressively in the early game because Mana Break is quite powerful. Man Phantom Assassin has that Blink Strike, has got that slow, and of course, if she gets a couple of early crits, it does do a ridiculous amount of damage to squishy heroes. So if she leaps over to the back of the fight, starts wailing wail something like Lashrak, she can actually pick him off with a few with a little bit of luck. But at the same time, kind of a uh, it's a little bit unreliable, and she will be need she will need to be careful against Nyx. If she crits herself off Nyx's blade, of Nyx's carapace, that will be slightly embarrassing to watch. Slightly embarrassing and absolutely hilarious. If that happens, I will be highlighting it for sure because my God, oh boy, it's always funny to watch in action. Absolute legends. They've got plenty of team fight potential. Again, Empire with a fairly gank-oriented line. They do have better team fight this time around, just because Naga Siren is there, as well as the Shrek. Keeper of the Light, if they can land the Illuminations, Illuminate with Naga Siren is going to be very easy to land. If they can land a couple of good hits, I mean, if they can land the perfect combo, Illuminate gets fully charged up, and they also get the Naga Songs to set that up. Then they have Nyx instantly burst down a couple of heroes off that. That could quite easily swing a fight for them. That may be what they need to say, pick off um, the Enigma, pick off... The tight under, just the, they're not so much going for mass disable, they're going for mass burst. And they just want to isolate and destroy a couple of heroes and really just set up the fight for themselves. That said, Van of Assassin, she could be an issue late game. It tends, it's going to come down to how they deal with her. 
if they can gank her a lot, this is going to be hard for her to farm. This is not going to be fun for her to have to worry about scandal ganking her all the time. Also, shout out to Shiva in the chat there. I see she's just popped up. This is a hell of a weird lineup, though. We'll see how they decide to go with it. Also, I'm just going to call out... Did I remember to... Did I remember? I did remember. Okay. To hit voice record, sometimes I do forget. Now, I guess Siren, they're taking the top line. No surprises there. Now we should call out the players. If it'll let me... There we go. All right. So, playing on the radio side. Absolute Legends. Mania is playing Enigma. Come with me playing... The Crystal Maiden, Vigos playing Queen of Pain, Freezer on the tight under Sony playing Phantom Assassin. And on the dire side for Team Empire, we have Goblack playing the Keeper of the Lights, SS playing Lashrak, Scandal playing the Nyx Assassin, as well as Nabrowski playing the Naga Siren, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Funnick playing Windrunner. And there we go, Windrunner with the Suicide Solo duties. And it will be Queen of Pain in the solo mid. She's up against a dual lane, though. Oh man, this is going to be quite frustrating for Queen of Pain. Not only is she going to be getting hit by Nyx Assassin left, right, and center with his mana burn, but at the same time, it's going to be never. It's going to be a never-ending torrent of mana burns. As we're going to see, Tide Hunter come from behind Chris Man as well. There's a frostbite as well. Scandal and some serious trouble. Nice first blood there from Absolute Legends. That's the kind of setup they need. Vigos now going to set this up as well. We're going to set Vigos up for a bit of farm. And they might even. They are going to go two v one here. They get the high ground ward dead. And this is what I mean though, look at that. That mana burn is really going to start to sting. He might even... No, he won't start maxing out. He, he definitely won't max that out. He needs to level up and pale just because I'm pretty sure the stun time still scales. Yes, it does. He does need to level that up and need... Naga Siren though has started off with a poor man's shield, has been pulled. Some tangos there. Sort of classic anti-mage starting items. Gets, gets pulled those tangles or a health potion. SS now looking to jungle. Freezer now. Heading into the jungle, going to try and see if he can snipe some experience here. He's a little bit worried though. Early gank from also helping out. Vigos now completely out of mana. And now he's not going to be able to do that classic harassment with the Shadow Strike. And then we got again more and more mana just being spammed on him. Chris Main farming away there. Windrunner now just trying to get this stack set. I think she's very worried. I think she is extremely worried. We've got double slows here from Phantom Assassin as well as Chris Main. She's also got lockdown for Frostbite. And then just the fact. The Venom Assassin hits pretty hard. Next I see. As we see apparently some administrative problems. Okay, so apparently if the game if players don't stay in the game until the throne is destroyed, the replay doesn't record. Ooh, and when people are paying money for that replay, oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Now Queen of Pain, she is starting to get some money up. If she can get that bottle, things would be a lot easier for her. Of course, at the same time, once she loses her mana, it does reduce the effectiveness of the mana burn, but at the same time, of course, Scandal can just stone, turn around and start spamming stuns instead, which honestly will be more efficient as he levels that up, just because of stuns time, obviously. Very painful. And once he starts comboing that with some Illuminates, Queen of Pain going to struggle to stay in this lane indeed. Meanwhile, we'll check the farm for players. At the moment, 14 and 2 there for the Naga Siren. At the same time, it looks like we've got 13 and 8 here for Sony, who is free farming to his heart's content. Freezer, meanwhile... Looks like he's definitely struggling. 2-0. and Lashrak just farming away in the jungle somewhat. Just doing a lot of pulling. In fact, a stack of creep that doesn't quite manage to succeed in the... Well, he was going for a stack, actually. He wasn't going for a pull there. Just looking for a stack. Freezer has been spotted. Going to get harassed there. Chops his way through the trees. Can we get a stun here? The net goes down. Going to set up a split earth for sure. There's the split earth. A riptide on top of it. Freezer, no escape. Easy kill there. And Empire respawn. Get a kill on the board. Meanwhile, though, mid is still not going well at all. This is just one of those situations, though. A 2v1 is never really fair odds. This, of course, does open up room for the other heroes to catch up on their farm. And honestly, in this case, Absolute Legends, they will want to basically prioritize on pushing in this lane. Because at the moment, they're jungling, which is going well. At the same time, though, their opponents are jungling, and their opponents are winning two lanes. They're winning the mid, they're winning the top lane, which means... Absolute legend, they need to make something really happen on the bottom lane because they cannot afford to be losing three lanes at once. They do need to make something else happen elsewhere. They are winning in the sense that Sony is getting farmed, but they kind of want to be pushing towers, just causing some trouble, or at the very least, sending their supports elsewhere to bolster the other lanes. 
because if Empire keep getting this kind of farm, things are going to get sour really, really quickly for them. Crystal Maiden now coming to cause some trouble. And this is what I mean about bolstering the other lanes there. Frostbite as well. Scandal has found himself in this rune. Goblin will get taken out. The stun goes down on Come With Me. Here comes Enigma. They're going for the gank here on Scandal as well. The Malif is causing some trouble, and they will not do enough damage to Come With Me to bring him down. A double kill, though, for Come With Me. Crystal Maiden grabbing both of those. That will definitely help her work towards her early... Well, her early... In fact, she already has boots. She has been pulling and stacking there, so she's been getting a bit of cash there. Of course, I think she may have got the first blood as well. Yeah, she got the first blood on top of that, so no wonder she has her boots down and dusted already. This is probably the richest Crystal Maiden ever in the history of all things, except for when Dendi decides to play Crystal Carry Crystal Maiden. Let's Shrak now getting ready to pull this, or stack this again. Just trying to get a massive creeps. In fact, they might even try and burst that down and then have Nagasar and just finish it off with Illusions and Riptides. But definitely a good counter gank there from Al. That's exactly what they need. The kind of pressure they need to keep up. So only now level 6. We'll see how much he crits for in a bit. Port's up top though. They're looking for trouble. Freezer though. Still only level 2. He's got the Kraken Shell second as well. SS now moving in. There we go. They've got the setup ready. There's the net. The stun will come in a second. Crystal Maiden is here, but she can't really win this fight. Needs to be careful too. It will cause a lot of damage. And Nagasar opening up with Arcane Boots. That is an interesting decision. They're going for the nukes and the team fight potential more than the carry potential, especially since she's had her base damage nerfed quite significantly. We do need to remember that. It does really... And, of course, because base damage nerf means it also nerfs her illusions, which are also a big source of her damage come late game. It's not Dyer's much fun to have that nerfed at all. Now, I definitely think teams have been way more focused on her late game potential. I mean, I'm focused on her uh, team fight potential than anything else lately. Another gank here from Absolute Legends. Oh, they find themselves a double damage. I think they may leave it for Queen of Pain, though. Not really going to do a whole lot on Chris Man. They're going to walk straight into the Creeper of the Light. Creeper of the Light. As it looks like he will get pretty much instantly taken out. Scandal may not want to stand around here. Throws down the mana burn. Not going to do a whole lot, though. I say Creeper of the Light because, of course, if you've heard any of his lines, he definitely hits on the... Uh, well, put it this way. He hit, he'll be hitting on Crystal Maiden as well as Queen of Pain in this game with the voice lines. Now port bottom though, it looks like they're going to try and make something happen in the bottom lane, and they definitely do need to make something happen. Empire coming down here to put pressure on Sony. They do need to pick him off a few times, but a defensive lane ward, really good ward there from Chris Main, setting, you know, setting things up, making sure he can't get caught out, and we'll see Sony back up in time. And they know Lashrak's still there, because they haven't seen him, yeah, there we have seen him now. But if they see him not come back towards that ward, they know he's still skulking in the jungle. What has Sony got so far? Hand of, he's gone straight for a Hand of Midas. Oh wow, okay, so he's just going to try and accelerate his farm off that. That is a 7 minute Hand of Midas, indeed quite scary. They're looking for trouble. The Windrunner now jumping into the trees. That She is getting caught out, tries to teleport, gets cancelled there. An easy kill for Phantom Assassin. That gank from the dire side backfiring horribly. And this is, this is the end of Empire's 22 win streak. That is definitely unfortunate. But this is pretty much what set it up. That ward right there. They kind of need to smoke gank to help him out. If you're a support player, if you're a support player in pub games, that is a ward that really, that saves lives. That kind of ward, if you've got to carry your babysitting, try and put a ward down in those positions. Lane wards save lives so many times. Ooh, another mana burn on Queen of Pain. Definitely frustrating. In fact, she's maxed out uh, Scream so far. She's gone for only one level in the Shadow Strike Harass. Nyx Assassin, though, is indeed maxing in power. Stock standard stuff there. He's not... He's slightly behind the levels, obviously, because he's dual laning at the moment. This is one of the downsides to dual laning. Nyx Assassin, who is a very level dependent hero, is falling behind somewhat. But at the same time, he's getting guaranteed farm against the Queen of Pain. Although he's not doing as well as I thought. He's only 22 and 11. The Queen of Pain 17 and 5, though. At the very least, he's suppressing the Queen of Pain. Nyx, of course, not that greedy on terms of farm. Only really needs a few small items. And then he kind of hits his stride. We'll, just, we'll see what Scandal goes with, though, for utility items in the mid-game. Whether he'll try and do a... Just storm it up pub style with a Dagon, or if you'll go for something else, and maybe something a bit more utility focused. Absolute Legends just focusing on their farm, and I think AL, they're quite happy to let the game go at this pace, they know they've got a bit of an advantage here. You see, they've already got a 2k gold lead, and more importantly, the 3000 experience lead at this point in time. It's going to 